Hello everyone, thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to show you a modified Z Fold card. This is part of the Puckle Doodles YouTube hop and all of the information for the measurements of the card and the materials will be listed down below along with the other folks who are participating in this blog hop. First, after cutting my cardstock down, I scored it and then I started applying the different layers of paper to the base. This portion of the video has been sped up six times that of which it was recorded. This way you can actually see me put down the layers without having to sit through the tedious process of watching me cut each one. As a general rule, each base cardstock and their coordinating layers are one eighth of an inch smaller than the one previous. This makes for a great matting and visual effect on my cards. I'm using some regular tape runner. This is Scotch 3M adhesives to apply all of my layers. This glue, excuse me, this tape is very strong and it's great for card makers. My only tip is that once you have everything in place, use a bone folder or your nails just to smooth everything out so that it stays in place. Once it's set up, it's permanent unless you use some undo to undo it. Now that I have all of the layer pieces together, it's time to start doing some stamping. I'm using my stamps from Polka Doodles. These were part of my design team package that I received from Nikki, along with a few stamp sets that I already have of hers in my personal collection. All of the stamping today was done with Memento Tuxedo Black ink and then colored with my Copic markers. I kept the coloring of this first image very simple by using three different markers, R24, Y18, and G23 to color this image and I did not, like I said, I didn't do a whole lot of shading. I wanted it simple so that it would be quick and easy to complete. Now I'm going to take the Just a Note to Say stamp and do a little surgery on it. On this particular stamp I removed the To Say portion from the Just a Note and to make sure it was st straight on my block, I did stamp it off. Once again, I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black ink for all of my stamping in today's project. You may notice that I am not using my Misty for the stamping of these images, mostly because I recently returned home from the Stamp and Scrapbook Expo in Duluth, Georgia, and many of my supplies are still in their containers from where I traveled. I just haven't put them away yet. I did have a block handy, and a block is just as good as a Misty, especially with something like this where you don't have to have every single image just perfect. Once again, that Memento Tuxedo Black Ink is my ink of choice. I'm going to put you into four times fast forward mode from here so that you can enjoy the coloring process.
just like with my two minute Tuesday video, which I will try to link in a card above or in the video description below, I am using some glossy accents, a bezel, which in this case looks like a flower, and a glass dome cabochon to make the necklace. First, all you do is put some glossy accents where you want it on some pattern paper, and then you're going to cut that out with scissors. To finish this piece off, we're going to use some low-tack glue dots to hold this necklace into place on the front of the card as well as on the inside of that Z flap so that the recipient can easily remove the chain necklace and wear it. If you've kept the card blank on the inside, of course, they can reuse the card as well. The real-time recording of this video was approximately 45 minutes. That was including all of my stamping, die cutting, and coloring. It is not a difficult project to make, and it was a lot of fun. I hope that you have indeed enjoyed my video. If you have, leave me a thumbs up. Don't forget to hop along to the other YouTubes on this collaboration and YouTube hop. Subscribe to all of their videos as well as mine. Share the videos on your social media. And don't forget, stamp happy and be a blessing. I will see you all soon. Bye for now.